Now let's look at David's life. Number one, if you are marked, you're going to be approved in private. Now this one messes with people because we want to insta story our elevation. See, see, because what God wants to do in your life is something that He cannot do on display when it's in seed form. And, and, and this messes with our culture because we want everybody to know we've been approved. We want everybody to recognize what God has done in our life, and he did speak to you, and he did give you a word at that conference, and he did touch your life sitting in the back row of, of that meeting or whatever he did, but everybody doesn't need to know. He, God intentionally is approving you in private. Why? Because the easiest time to kill something is when it's in infant stage. And many people are putting all their dreams, visions, ideas out there when it's baby stage, and people are coming to stab and kill and drown everything that God has called you to do. Just think about it. When, when they were scared of Jesus being born, the Messiah, what did they do? They killed all the males under the age of two because it's the easiest to kill a king in kid form. And I came to encourage you, just because everybody doesn't know doesn't mean you ain't marked. David was not even invited to the party. They didn't even call for him. He must have seen the caravan coming in before anybody because he was the shepherd. He was out in the field. He saw him, but they didn't invite him to the party. But he wasn't trying to get into the party because David was content with doing the last thing God told him and spending time in the presence of God. And what happened is they sent for him. And when he gets in the room, and his brothers are standing there, probably hungry and jealous, he said, you're marked. And he was approved in private, and he did not get to go and tell everybody. What are you saying, Pastor Mike? There's somebody in this room who you know God has called you to greater than what you're dealing with right now, but you're still marked even though nobody else knows. And if you don't see that hit coming, you'll start doing things to try to allow people to know, and then somebody will speak death into what God called to live. So you all, do y'all hear what I'm saying? Somebody will be able, and I'm telling you, you're marked, even if everybody doesn't recognize it. You may have family members that, girl, he ain't gonna do nothing. You just gonna be the same thing as it was, like your granddaddy and your granddaddy. Be quiet. I cannot deal with you anymore because I have been approved in private. Somebody say, I'm marked. Let, let me help you understand. See, see, because the Bible always says, and, and God was with David, and God was with David. You can research it, and God was with David. The, I, I begin to say, God, why were you always with David? It said, because David was always with me. See, a lot of people want God to, to be with them, but they're not with him. And, and, and he's not going to intrude on your busy schedule. you got to make room for him. He's a gentleman. Though he stands at the door and knocks, you got to let him in. And, 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 and God is saying to us today, if you would just do the last thing I told you and spend time in my presence, I'll approve you in private. See, if you're marked, let me give you the second thing. You're anointed before you're positioned. So just imagine this picture with me. David goes into this room. Samuel marks him. He anoints him. He said, you're going to be the next king of Israel. For most of us, we would be looking to go back to the palace with Samuel. Yep, I'm going to catch a ride with you. Where was David's next move? Back to the pasture. Because he was anointed before he ever got a position. And see, most, most of us feel like no, 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 no. I'm anointed, so now it's time for me to be on the platform. I'm anointed, now it's time for me to be the CEO. I'm anointed. You just said, I'm going to be the next king of Israel. Let's go. Like We're trying to do it at that moment, but what God is saying is, I want to anoint you, and then I want to send you back into the sphere of influence that you came from to make a difference there. So he's anointed the king of Israel, but has to go back with the sheep and goats. Sounds like where you going Monday morning. And God says, will you make a difference there? Can I make you be light in darkness at that school? Will you be my representative that goes in and changes a situation? Will you stand and represent me or represent me at that nursing home, at that hospital? And most of us, we don't see that hit coming. 
So God, I'm anointed, right? And he said, yeah, now go get with the sheep. Keep serving and eat kids. Well, pastor, I got, I got songs in me. Elevation needs to hear it in time, but go keep serving the kids and don't sing. Because what God wants to do in your life, he wants to get the glory for you. And so, so, so really the problem is, and then really the question is, how are you waiting? Because you're anointed. Like, like, but how are you waiting? And most of us wait like this. Oh my God, I'm waiting on you, Lord. Do it again. Like, keep singing it. Do it. But I don't think it's like, how are you waiting? I really think it's, how are you waiting? At your service, God. What do you want me to do? You want me to give that? You want me to go pick them up? You want me to keep serving them? Because at that moment, it's a heart check. And he says, can I, can I mark you, but then send you into a place that doesn't look like where you're going to be? And that's the battle because many times our expectation and our experience don't match. God, how I'm supposed to be a CEO and philanthropist and I'm supposed to pay for people's stuff, but I'm sitting here looking at all this debt and God said, I'm the miracle worker. I need your obedience. And so I just wanted somebody in here to realize that you, if you're marked, and I know there's a lot of people in this room, that you're going to be anointed before your position. And so the scripture I want to give you is Proverbs 3, 5, to trust in the Lord in this waiting process with all your heart. And don't depend on your own understanding. It's not going to make sense. Well, I just can't figure it out. Like, if God really wanted me to be this, then why? you're not going to be able to figure it out. He's looking for a hot heart posture, not a plan from you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge God in everything you do. And then it says he will direct your path. Every marked person in the place, just say it with a little more faith. Say, I'm marked. I'm marked. Yes, yeah, coming. If you're marked, let me give you another thing. You become the answer to a problem. See, so David goes back to the field. He's, he's doing the last thing God told him and spending time in the presence. I want you to see how pivotal this is. Like some people, I get questions all the time. Well, Pastor Mike, what do you do if you just feel like you don't know what to do? Do the last thing you know God told you to do and spend time in the presence of God. That's what David did. He, he didn't have a GPS or a map to his purpose. He just was doing the last thing and watch what happens. He becomes the answer to a problem. Saul is now being tormented by evil spirits in the palace. And, and, and you got to read 1 Samuel 16, 17, 18. You just got to read the whole thing. I don't got time to go through it all. But he's being tormented by evil spirits in the palace. And one of his assistants says, hey, maybe we should get a guitar player in here or a skilled musician to be able to torment these evil spirits. And then one of the guys was like, well, do you know anybody? And he was like, yeah, Jesse has a boy named David. And he'd be in the field all the time just, yeah. And he'd be welling. And, and so I think we can go get him. And now watch. David did not fill out an application to go to the palace. He did not use connections to get in the palace because he was doing the last thing God told him and spending time in the presence and perfecting what was in his hands. Do you understand what I'm saying? They sent for him. What are you trying to say, Pastor Mike? When you are doing what God told you to do, you will never have to vie for your position. They will send for you. Yeah, I know that, that don't work with the ambitious culture that we got. Be on your grind and your hustle and all this other stuff. They'll send for you. They sent for David. And I want you to see this. Because David did not come to the palace with nothing. He came as the answer to a problem. And some of us are sitting here so deficient in skills God gave us. You don't even work on it no more. If he couldn't play, he wouldn't have even been invited to the palace. Do you understand what I'm saying? But in the pasture, he was working on what was in his hands. And he went to the palace. Now watch. The place that he already knew he was called to be in. He did not go as a king or a prince. He went as a servant. 
What are you trying to say, Pastor Mike? God will allow you to taste your future, not as a person of interest, but as somebody to serve. 